I'm here with Don Deloach, the CEO of Alary. Don, how can trading systems keep up with the growing volume of data while also providing a competitive advantage for traders? It's interesting because when people think of trading systems, uh, technologists like myself and, and my friends at Sybase and, and others um, often want to emphasize the, the power of technology as if it exists um, in isolation. And, and you hear people talk about trends in electronic, tra um, electronic trading and algorithmic trading and, and the increasing role of technology to the point where <clears throat> in, in many ways there's this assertion that uh, traders are going away and then it's all going to be technology. And I, I think that's a huge misconception. And, and if you spend any time talking to traders, th they would reiterate that that's a huge misconception. In fact, technology gives traders leverage. And so you'll see less and less traders and more and more technologists in the ecosystem, but it, it's all leveraging the power of traders in the context of an electronic market. So if you look at the proliferation of data, if you look at the increase in the speed and the volume of the markets, uh, if you look at the complexity, both, both based on fragmentation in the markets and the fact that people are trading across multiple asset classes, across multiple geographies, it, it's, it's very difficult to assume that the human mind and the average trader, absent the trading system, is going to be able to keep up. It, and clearly, traders can't keep up. But the idea that you take the trader out of the equation is equally ridiculous. Therefore, what will happen is that technology will rise above where it's been, and new modalities will emerge, things like complex event processing, that allow for the scale and the flexibility that's required by the markets. Now, what I, I believe will happen is that the systems that emerge will emerge in a way that is very symbiotic with the traders. So, so there will be underlying algorithms that will be firing across a number of different use cases in the trade life cycle, whether it's uh, trade strategy, trade execution, uh, order book management, market making, regulatory and compliance, surveillance. The role of the trader will be, in essence, to watch, monitor, and provide input into the algorithm. So when I talk about the symbiotic relationship, fundamentally I mean that you'll have a trader that's sensing the market and having all kinds of inputs that are aided from the trading system and interact with the underlying algorithms in order to more effectively trade. So the trader may be sweeping um, uh, a fragmented market to do a virtual order book and analyzing what the liquidity picture looks like at any point in time and then making decisions against that which may involve tuning underlying algorithms that are running. The trader never goes away, but the importance of technology and the leverage that technology provides the trader increases dramatically. And I think that that's sort of where we're seeing things going. The traditional wisdom on Wall Street says that in order to differentiate trading systems, capital market institutions need to build their own systems. Is that changing? Well, that's a function of decoupling where the system starts and, and where the proprietary nature of what distinguishes a trading firm ends. I mean, if you talk to a prop trader, um, it's like talking to somebody, in many cases, that's a CIA operative, you know. They'll talk to you, but it has to be in a coffee shop, and you have to call them Dan, even though their name is Bill. Um, there, there is a clandestine nature to protecting the intellectual property associated with the algorithms and the secret sauce of any, any trading shop. But the tools that are utilized um, go beyond the core competencies uh, of the traders. So just, just as in... Um, you know, the mid-90s and, and early 90s even, when um, relational databases emerged and stored procedures and triggers were pioneered by Sybase, um, people like Goldman Sachs utilized that to synchronize their trading operations, which was a huge competitive advantage, okay? They weren't building the underlying technology, but they were applying their domain expertise to leverage that effectively to give them an advantage. In today's market, the people who are the early adopters of complex event processing are the ones that recognize the power of being able to harness a large amount of data with very high throughput and low latency characteristics in order to act on market conditions faster than their competition. The way they do that is the intellectual property that they're providing uh, via the authoring environment that complex event processing gives you, but the underlying technology 
um, is really available to anybody, and that's not going to be, the, you're not going to see Goldman or, or prop shops or, or whoever um, building their own complex event processing system per se, or at least I, I would highly doubt that you would, um, but you will see them using it each in their own unique way to gain that competitive advantage. CEP technology is still kind of new to most capital market institutions. Where is it being used most today? Um, early on, the, the, all the traction was around algo trading. Um, the, the close cousin of that became uh, market data absorption and enrichment. Um, Alary and Sybase uh, have a, a joint customer in London doing exactly that on the fixed income side. Um, uh, you're seeing a lot more around liquidity discovery, um, managing order books. You're seeing a lot more around real-time risk analysis. And I suspect that you're going to begin to see a lot more around um, uh, compliance, especially in, in Europe with MIFID, uh, because the complexity of MIFID requires an underlying technology that has capabilities like what you get with complex event processing, <laughs> most specifically with the type capabilities that Larry has, of course. Um, that being the ability to manage changing data and some of, some of the other um, extensibility uh, characteristics that I talked about before. But, but definitely uh, real-time risk, uh, definitely market making and, and order book management, um, and certainly compliance will come on. And, and one other that you're seeing a little bit more of is surveillance. Um, as there is a growing number of, um, of venues, trading venues, um, both in, in North America and especially across Europe and Asia, um, there's a need to, to provide surveillance against these trading facilities to understand where they're being gamed, so things like order stream analysis, uh, and CEP is very good for that. Now, it's that, that's an area where you know, a lot of CEP offerings, provided they can keep up with the pace, should be able to do that, because that doesn't inherently require the underlying robustness that a Larry would bring. Um, so that would be a little bit more crowded field in terms of the offering, as opposed to something like order book management, where we would stand to kind of alone. How does a Larry's CEP platform enhance Sybase wrap? Oh, uh, by providing um, incredible scalability and uh, throughput on the very front end where these real-time applications need to exist. But by complementing it, because if you look at the dynamic, the real-time information only gets you so far. The quality of the real-time information is enhanced and the ability for the, the quality of the applications that you develop to operate in real-time are much more powerful if, it, if it's a complete cycle where I can take real-time information and filter it and enhance it on the fly. I can, I can apply certain processing logic against it, but I can also feed all kinds of other systems that many of which on Wall Street are already Sybase based. I can, I can provide them in a historical repository like something like Sybase IQ as a component of wrap where in the end, I'm going to want to cycle that information back in for pattern recognition. Uh, for So for example, I'll give you a, a quick, and I know you want this short, but I'll give you a quick uh, analysis, I mean, uh, um, uh, illustration. If I'm doing market liquidity analysis, if I'm doing market liquidity analysis and I want to measure what's in the displayed markets, I can do that pretty easily. But if I want to then predict what's in the non-displayed markets, I can do that by taking in uh, liquidity data on the displayed markets over time and trade information about what traded across the markets over time and begin to build algorithms based on that his historical repository that would suggest that under certain market conditions, if the liquidity looks like this in the displayed markets, then I can infer that the liquidity looks like this in the non-displayed markets. That is a beautiful um, uh, sort of, uh, uh, synergy between what Alary can bring to the table and what Sybase brings to the table, cooperating together in a way that delivers huge value to a trader. So it, it is the merging the technologies from the very front in real time to the overall ecosystem that RAP speaks to that provides um, that enhanced opportunity. Don, thank you for talking to us about Alary. Thanks for having me.